Before we start, I want to warn everybody that this video contains spoilers of the Casa de Papel series, so if you haven't watched the Casa de Papel ending and intend to do so, maybe save this video too after you've seen the show. If that isn't the case, don't forget to like this video, comment your opinion down below and subscribe to the channel, make sure that you don't miss any further videos on this channel. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. So, Casa de Papel is about a mastermind called the Professor, who recruits a group of criminals with different abilities to, in season 1, rob the Royal Mint of Spain and in season 2, the Bank of Spain. There is two main rules that the professor instructs the group of. One, that nobody in the robbery is to be physically hurt and number two, that nobody within the group is to share any personal information or feelings with each other. This includes each one of the members to be known as different city names such as Tokyo, Rio, Nairobi, Berlin, Helsinki, Denver, Moscow, Lisbon, Oslo and Manila among a few more. This last rule of personal engagement will however quickly get broken as we see Ryu and Tokyo in an internal relationship while Denver gets involved with a actual hostage who later will become one of them named Stockholm. Furthermore, every single one in the group gets to a point where they all in some way or another consider each other as friends and even in some cases family. For this video we're gonna look at the ending scene of the last episode in season 5. Basically, what's going on is that Professor's group have been making a heist on the Spanish bank in Madrid, whereas after a lot of incidents, the Spanish police decides to hire a special force of units to charge the group from the roof. The group gets split into two, whereas Denver, Manila and Tokyo get stuck in the kitchen surrounded by the special force, while Rio is beneath them trying to save the group by drilling a hole for them to escape from. Meanwhile, clashes are carried out between the two groups. Denver, Manila and Tokyo makes it very hard for the special forces, but in the end, they have more men, more guns and ammo and more backup. The surrounding forces end up shooting Tokyo from the outside, hitting her several times in the leg, arm and her bulletproof vest. Denver drags Tokyo out of the shooting range, patches her up as good as he can while Manila is holding off the special forces outside. Through the walkie-talkie, Stockholm tells the group of a secret passage, which goes down at least six floors. The group realizes that it is a possible route for Denver and Manila, but not for Tokyo. Tokyo thinks for a few seconds before she tells Manila and Denver to take the route while she holds off the special forces. While Denver and Manila refuses to leave her, Tokyo convinces them by saying that she will jump down if they put soft things on the ground floor so that she can jump and land on it. Denver and Manila agrees and starts their plan without them knowing that Tokyo actually is sacrificing herself for them to get away. Being in middle of clashes with the machine gun against several of the special forces, Tokyo decides to refuse following orders from the professor and stays in the front line to fight off the group. She is eventually shot a bunch of times by the group who come forward to her body to finish her off. What Tokyo then does just before being shot by Gandia is giving him a insulting smile. Gandia looks at her hand and sees the grenade trigger that Tokyo is holding, quickly but too late realizing that Tokyo are about to blow four grenades to kill herself alongside at least seven other special forces units, thereby killing herself for her friends and strongly weakens the enemies in the closest area. Now, what's the connection with this and the Kurdish cause? Immediately when I watched this for the first time, I compared it to a specific event from the siege of Kobani, and this was also something that 40% of my followers on Instagram noticed. 
in the siege of Kobani back in 2014, before the Kurds got the upper hand in the war, the Islamic State made a lot of progress and territory gain in the area. At the time, they claimed almost 70% of Kobani, and just as in this scene of Casa de Papel, a group of Kurdish women from the YPG was trapped on the Mishtanur hill, surrounded by Islamic State fighters. 22 years old Arin Mirkan and 34 years old Rojda Felhat was trapped among several other YPG fighters who fought for their life against the Islamic State, which were outnumbering them by far. According to what we know, the ISIS fighters were closing in on Arin and her group, who stood by the hill and defended the area. She had realized that they were surrounded and that there was no way out. She then took the remaining explosives, threw a hand grenade as a distraction, then ran into the ISIS gangs and detonated herself. The explosion that followed killed at least 10 ISIS members and destroyed an enemy tank giving her unit a chance to retreat into the city. Arin's close friend Rojda Felat, who today is a high-ranking commander of the YPJ, took it upon herself to tell about Arin Mirkan and how she saved her group from certain death by sacrificing herself. The story of Arin and the Casa de Papel final is with some minor changes resembling each other a lot, and some might say that it is just a coincidence that it does so. This I will leave up to you to discuss in the comment section below. Do you think that the final episode is knowingly portraying the events of Arin Mirkan, or is it just a coincidence? And also, if you want me to do a specific video about the life of Arin Mirkan, give this video a like right now. Until next time, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, everything about Kurdistan, and finally, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any further videos on this channel.